Hello everybody, my name is Brady, and this is my series of Warhammer 40k guides. In today's episode, we will be discussing how to get the most out of your charge and fight phases. This includes how to pile in or consolidate properly to gain advantages, and how to ensure that you can attack whatever you want when charging it. I'm also going to throw in some tips for actual combat you might not know as well. So to declare a charge with one of your units, you have to be within 12 inches of an enemy model. Anything you charge can then overwatch, and then you can either fail or succeed based on your dice roll. One cool trick most people don't know about 8th is that a unit that's 12 inches from an enemy unit can declare a charge against every enemy unit within 12, even if there's units all around him. Here's an example right here. This is a tabletop simulator, by the way. It's a great game you can purchase on Steam that allows mods that offer Warhammer 40k stuff. It's really great for playing games against people across the world or for testing units you don't own out with a friend. Today I will be using it for this guide since I don't have a great setup to record my real models. Getting back into the first tip, which is talking about charging multiple units. <clears throat> so in this example we have Karn the Betrayer and a bunch of tactical marines surrounding him and one apothecary hidden in the back. You can actually declare a charge against everything that is surrounding you. If you look at this guy, we can measure how far he is from every unit. So he's 3.3 inches away from them, so he needs a 3 inch charge because he needs to end within an inch. In this edition, you do not have to end in base contact, you only have to end within an inch to get into close combat. So if this guy is 6 inches away, then I need 5 inches. So I need a 3 inch charge here and a 5 inch charge here. And then if I wanted to get into these guys, I would need a 8 inch charge. The number of corn. When we get into shooting, if I think I could withstand all this overwatch, I could declare charges against everything here. And then everything gets to fire overwatch, but then this is how it would work if I end up surviving. Let's take the red dice because corn. So, you then say you survived Overwatch miraculously. You then roll your charges, and this is a 7. Meaning, I wouldn't get into the one that required an 8, but I could get into... How much was this one again? 6? So I could actually successfully charge this, and as long as I declared a charge against him too, you could do something pretty cool after. This is also a backup, like a, a failsafe, because if I would have rolled a 4, I wouldn't get into here, or into that, or into here, but I could still charge these guys and get something out of my charge phase. Like maybe the reason I wanted, I did this is because I have an objective to kill an HQ or something like that. Maybe I wanted to go this way hoping for a 12 inch so I could run around these guys and get in there. And then also, if that was the case, 12 inch would probably be exactly like this. So that, I would have to declare a charge against these guys to make sure that it was successful, like running around here. And then how this would work is getting into our next tip for this video, is how to pile in properly and get the most out of your pile-ins and consolidates. So again, let's go back to the example saying that this guy needs to kill this HQ because he's just, maybe he's bringing too many people back from the dead, he's healing too many people, or you just have an objective to kill a character that turn. You can then roll, and we'll go through two scenarios real quick. The first scenario is if you make enough just to charge into this unit. So you'll get there. Now, you can then declare all of your attacks on this unit. And let's say you kill a Chaos Lord, or Karn the Betrayer probably would realistically kill all these guys, right? And that probably, let's say he rolled really well and he killed them all in one... Uh, one of his sets of attacks, because Karn can attack twice in the a fight phase, remember this? So how this would work is, he would fight them, destroy them, kill them all, then you can use his 3 inch pylon move to go into here. Now, here's where it gets a little wonky and where people get confused. If you declare to charge against this unit, against the apothecary, you could then activate Karn for his second time and start swinging on the apothecary, as long as you declared your charge against them. You could also use the Stratagem to activate another unit again if you're playing a Chaos Space Marine Army. They have a 3-point Stratagem that allows one of their infantry units to fight again. 
So you could essentially make Berserkers fight three times or Karn fight three times. So Karn, let's say he's not using that and he's using his ability. If you declared a charge against both of those units, so going back and saying when we charged, we declared bo both of these, you would pile in and then do your second set of attacks on the Apothecary, most likely murderizing the Apothecary. So that's how you would be able to do that. That's how you can pile into stuff and still attack with either stratagems and other things, is you have to declare a charge against that unit. If you don't declare a charge against that unit, you can pile into them, but you won't be able to hit them and they will be able to hit you. But now, let's go and give you another example. So now these are three units of tacticals bunched up because maybe, pretend this is a captain, and he's given all these guys a bunch of re-rolls and crap, right? Now you have Karn right here. <clears throat> Say Karn only has like two or three wounds left. Maybe he's almost dead. And you don't think you can survive all this Overwatch, especially with all the rerolls, right? So you can declare a charge against these guys. And then roll, get whatever, charge into them. Then when you pile in, make sure, and here's a trick with 8th edition. Make sure that your base is never in contact with the enemies unless you don't care if that unit moves ever again. So if we go like this and I end here, I am 0.6 or 0.5 centimeters or millimeters or whatever, 0.5 away from them. So because of that, when I go to pile in now, I can pile in and as long as I end closer than 0.5 to this unit, my pile in is successful. So now I can pile in up to three inches, which would probably be around here. I'm gonna go there. So now if you measure, I'm, I'm 0.4. I'm, I'm I ended closer to the nearest enemy unit, but I was able to pull in these guys into combat as well. So now they won't be, as long as he survives, they won't be shooting and they won't be shooting on their turn. Unless of course these are ultramarines, in which case there's uh, chapter tactic lets them run out of combat and shoot at minus one. But against like space wolves or whatever these guys are painted as, I'm pretty sure it's space wolves, you'd be able to pull these guys in and they wouldn't be able to attack. This is perfect for tank lines if someone has like three tanks lined up with each other. You can attack one if you kill it, pile into the other and that way it can't shoot. And it helps a lot. Learning how to pile in is great. The trick is, is never go into base and always make sure you can get closer to the enemy unit while doing something cool. So again, just to repeat it, repetition always helps you learn. So we're 0.6 away. So now when we consolidate, as long as we end closer to the nearest enemy unit, we can still pile in. So I can go right there because that's probably about three inches. Now I'm definitely closer, I'm probably like 0.3, but I've brought this combat in and maybe that combat as well. So that's how you would pull stuff into combat. For going back to what we were talking about earlier, for charging multiple units that are around you and then being able to pick what you're going to get into based off of your roll, whether you rolled high or low, don't do that unless your character's pretty strong or you or your army's guns aren't that great or they don't have a bunch of rerolls. Because the worst thing is declaring multiple charges against a bunch of stuff to try to get a tactical advantage and just getting shot in the face by a last cannon and losing your guy when you could have just played it safe and charged one unit and piled into the other ones. But even then, too, talking about piling in, you don't want to pile into, say, a Demon Prince. Say this is a Chaos Army, and it's Chaos vs. Chaos. If you charge this unit, you don't want to pile into this guy, because he's going to smack you and probably kill you. So you only want to pile into units that are not going to kill you in close combat, and two, are mainly shooty units, because then you get to stop them from shooting. Unless, of course, they have a Stratagem, or they're ultramarines. That's the only cases right now where pulling stuff into combat isn't the greatest. And also, if uh, something has the fly keyword, it can still shoot after leaving close combat. Okay, so for this example with the fly keyword, let's say there's five guys inside this open top vehicle. Open top vehicle gets charged or charges because their vehicles are actually okay in close combat. They're not the best, but they're okay. So you can charge. Now, on the next turn, the Venom could move out of combat and still shoot because it has a fly keyword, but the guys inside can't shoot out of it even though it's open top because they're in close combat. The way you get around this is, if this is in close combat and you want these guys to shoot, they get out up to their three inches and then you can move them to go like over here, over there, wherever they want. Then this thing backs out of combat, now everything can shoot. 
So that's how you would be able to shoot out of an open top vehicle or get around not being able to shoot out of an open top vehicle. So instead of losing out on a bunch of firepower that you would have normally lost out on by not letting them out, out of this thing, you can just get them out of the transport and everything can then fire and you can get your alpha or beta strike potential off. The last thing that I want to talk to you guys about, the last tip, would be, let's say you are the demon prince. Move this out of the way. Let's say you are the demon prince. Demon prince, uh, let's say this one's corn. A corn demon prince with a sword would get five attacks with the sword, and then let's say it's a world eater as well, so it gets five attacks with the sword, one for charging, so it would have six, plus it gets an extra one to use with its other claw. So this is debatable, and I have yet to see an FAQ that clarifies this, but on certain weapons, like even chain swords, it just says when you fight in the fight phase, you may make one additional attack with this weapon. It does not say you have to use the weapon to make the attack with it, it just says you get an additional attack with it. So in this case, because the Demon Prince has two weapons, he has his claw and the sword. The sword would get the five base attacks, or well, he has four base, plus one for being corn, so that'd be five, plus one for charging, for being a world leader, so that'd be six. So he gets six attacks with his sword and one with his claw because it's just an additional attack for fighting in the fight phase. As far as I'm concerned, that's how you play it. Unless an FAQ tells me otherwise, that's how I'm gonna play it. So anyways, so with that said, you have six attacks with your sword, one with your claw. You can actually allocate your attacks onto different units. So you can't, you, you can't do this with guns. You can't have like, if you rapid fire two, you can't have one bullet go somewhere and one bullet go the other way, but in close combat you can have your attacks swing at different things. So he has six plus one, so seven attacks. There are different profiles though, but let's just say seven attacks. You can then put five on these guys and two on these guys, trying to kill these two units. Let's because yeah, let's say these are two different units you're in combat with. Because if you put all seven on these two, that's overkill. If you put all seven on these four, it's slightly overkill because you're hitting on twos, wounding on threes, it's, it's really good. So I would put five on them and put two on them and hope for the best. So you can allocate your attacks like that. So going back to this though, let's say you need one point for killing a unit. And that one point is the difference between you winning the game and you losing the game. I wouldn't take the gamble of splitting up the attacks, and I would instead overkill the crap out of these guys, so that way you make sure you get what you need. In 40k, especially with the new rules and being able to split fire and have multiple attacks, people often get greedy and try to do like 4 attacks here, 2 attacks here, 1 attack on another unit, and some, if one of those fails then you're not killing one of those units, and if that's going to stop you from losing the game, then you screwed yourself. So. One thing I can say about stuff like this when splitting up attacks and when charging, when declaring charges against multiple units, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to overkill yourself. You don't want to be too greedy. You don't want to, like I said, probably said earlier, you don't want to charge into a bunch of units just to get a last cannon in the face and die. So you got to be strategic about it. You got to decide whether it's worth it, whether you can survive all that overwatch. You can also get around it by like having a tank charge first. That's another thing that we haven't talked about. And this is perfect for like uh, Dark Eldar. So if you want Dark Eldar, say you have some Incubi, but the Incubi are pretty squishy and they're gonna die to a huge unit of like Devastators or something. You just, you really don't wanna get shot in the face by a bunch of heavy bolters or whatever the Devastators have. You could charge in the tank first, that's most likely not gonna die. And then, now that unit's in close combat, if it charged, so let's say it charged these Marines. Doo -doo -doo -doo. They're now in close combat, they can no longer fire overwatch, so that's when you bring in your squishy units that can do damage. So you use tanks as like a front or a shield, so land raiders are great for this. You charge a land raider in, then charge in another unit to kill whatever you charged, and as long as you kill it, then your land raider's good on the next turn and gets to be able to shoot still. Next tip I would like to show you is how to get yourself out of combat if you don't want to be there. All right. For this example, Karn the Betrayer is going to be some Berserkers. These guys are going to be like scouts or something cheap that you can put in like 30 man blobs. So let's go like this and just bam, make another one. So now we got like all of these. Okay, so this is all one giant unit of something. Again, pretend these are like 
scouts or something that can go up to 30 man squads okay just for this example just to show you this would, this would actually be more or less for imperial guard i could go get imperial guard models but to be honest i'm lazy and i'd rather just do this like this so pretend these guys are guardsmen and these are berserkers so berserkers they charge they go ah we're in here okay so now that they're in there they get to do their pile in which is three inches so they all get to attack because you have to be either uh, within an inch or within an inch of a guy that's within an inch to be able to attack now the berserkers they have a bunch of attacks and they kill this many dudes now they get to pile in their three inches oh would you look at that are they within an inch of your unit anymore nope they can no longer swing they can no longer you're not in combat so when it's your turn if you're these guys you can now shoot with these guys and murder the berserkers so that's how you would pull yourself out of combat is if they kill enough dudes you just remove the ones that are touching them like you can count it ahead of time before you start picking up models and see how many you would get and then even measure and be like oh if i pull this many guys are they going to be able to get within an inch of me no okay i'm pulling all these guys so now they can't do it now i can shoot on my turn if you're ultramarines you don't really care about this kind of stuff because ultramarines can leave combat and shoot anyways but you still, you'd probably not want to be in combat with a bunch of berserkers. They would just eat you alive. Well, that about covers all the ways you can get the most out of the charge and fight phases. If I forgot anything, or there's anything you'd like to ask, feel free to comment down below. I'll try to get back to you by either commenting or talking about it in a future video. Hopefully I taught you guys something. Hopefully this helps you win more games of 40k. If you enjoyed this content, subscribe for more in the future. Thanks for watching guys, and happy wargaming.